So, uh, good day, everyone. We are uh, we have the great privilege to uh, have uh, Mike Whitehead with us today, five-time Paralympian. Uh, tell me if I'm right, Mike, but I believe you have the uh, you have the privilege to bring home uh, during those five Paralympics two uh, three two silver medals and one bronze medal. Yes. Um, and and my quick question for you, because I, I I read that you started in the wheelchair. Uh, rugby in um, 2001. Uh, you've been to five Paralympics. So, which, which other sport have you done? So, I'm not sure where five came about, and I'm I'm not correcting anybody along the way, just because I don't want to. You like the title, <laughs> but the the real answer is I've been to four. The That's goal what I thought to... exactly. Because everywhere it says five-time Paralympian, I don't know which, which will probably be the case, hopefully, in Tokyo. Yeah. But that's what I was concerned, because I'm like, okay, well, if I make my math, sure. Mike, yeah, if Mike <laughs> uh, began in 2001, that yeah. means it's four Paralympics. Okay, well, good to know. But cross, finger cross, hopefully uh, you will be a five-time Paralympian True. sooner than later. Um, and, 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 and yeah, you, you, the, 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 all those websites, they won't have to change, uh, <laughs> the number. You'll I don't know how that happened. Yeah. Well, talk about the <clears throat> quickly before we go on the, how you're doing this. How was the uh, qualification tournament a few weeks ago in Vancouver where the team officially qualified for, um, the Paralympics in Tokyo? Uh, now that you were a couple of weeks after, um, how, how, how did the, the tournament go for you and the team? Uh, the tournament went obviously great for the team. We executed the game plan well. We had prepared for years for that moment. So as a team, I think we came together on the bench. We came together on the floor. And the staff always, you know, hits a home run. So we had fun and we, uh, we executed. So... I can't, you know, personally, I can't ask for more. And I think all of us uh, are, are ecstatic, right? Yeah, and, and that tournament happened uh, the first week of March, so about um, four weeks ago now. Uh, did you have, it was in Vancouver, in Richmond, BC, and did you have to put yourself in, in quarantine coming back from that event? Or the COVID-19 in, in America uh, wasn't that much of an issue back then? Yeah, so... When I got, I flew home, well, I stayed for some coaching education and then I flew home the Wednesday. And when I got to Toronto to the airport, it was, you could sense that there's been some changes and, you know, the airport was quiet. And then when I got home to the States here, to Boston, and then came back up to New Hampshire, um, things were happening by the hour. And uh, thankfully we live in a great state and they pulled the plug on everything really wow. quickly. And you know, self-quarantine, the kids, you know, uh, no school. And from that point on, that Thursday, you know, we shut it down. My wife works from home, thankfully. So she had to cancel a few business trips. And then the schools were closed. And that Monday, the school had already sent, started to send homework uh, to the kids. So they, um, they, they got their act together really quickly. So we're, we're fortunate where we are uh, in America and New Hampshire. It's, it's, uh, it's really organized. Yeah, good. Good to know. Uh, and why, uh, for for uh, our friends that listen, um, why are you uh, in New Hampshire? Why do you live in America? And, and uh, what does uh, your kids and wife do during these quarantine at this time? Yeah. Yep. So I when I started playing wheelchair rugby in, in London with the Annihilators, uh, they gave me a connection to a team up in Maine to play in the U.S. As a wheelchair rugby player, you want to play early in your career in the U.S. because there's so many teams and that level of competition is very high. Right. So I got my way. I, I found my way down to Maine. And then uh, the assistant coach, who, who's a, a nice young lady and a physical therapist, we became friends. And next thing you know, uh, you know, we're making babies and living in the States. <laughs> <laughs> So that's how that worked. And when, when was that? Was that early 2000? Was the, or... Yeah, it was four. So our our daughter was born in May, and then within four weeks, I was in Athens wow. and uh, married. So that was a uh, quite a whirlwind. So thankfully, she was uh, she's a keeper, obviously. So 
So, and so I, if, I re, if I remember correctly, Athens was a silver medal for yeah. the team. Yeah, yeah. that's a good, uh, yeah, that's great to, to come back and lots of change in your life at that time, for sure. Oh, it was, it was fast and um, very, very happy about the way things turned out. So I've been in the States since then and uh, still on the national team. Um, and as far as the wife and kids, you know, we're fortunate. We, we have a little bit of uh, property here so we can spend some time outside. The weather is changing. So we started a little garden inside here and the kids are doing homework and there's been turbulence, you know, there's been some ups and downs and, and figuring the, 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 the schools are, are closed as well in New Hampshire. Oh, yeah. yeah. As of the, the, the Monday when I got back from Vancouver. So they've been, we're in, we're well in the week three. So our state, you know, they shut down things fast, which was good. And they turned one of the high schools into, a, a, I guess you would say, pseudo hospital where non-COVID will go there. And, um, you know, the, the, the state governor has, has done a good job with making funds accessible. So being a news junkie, uh, I'm a proud New Hampshire right. guy because the, the things that they, they've done here have been pretty amazing. That's good, and it's close to uh, close to the border, so we're happy that uh, your state, the uh, Canadian border, obviously. So we're, we're happy that the, your state is doing well to protect our our country too. So that's good, even though it's a small yeah. state. It, yeah, it's it's never bad. Okay, coming back to sport, uh, obviously leaving Vancouver, uh, you probably had a little break uh, ahead of you uh, after the qualification tournament. Uh, have you been? in contact with uh, coach uh, Patrick Cote and, and your teammates and how's the spirit so far being in the quarantine? So Pat called two days ago in the morning around 10 and we had a great chat and we're it sounds like we're on our way to starting to get back to some uh, video sessions and uh, more structured which is great I think right. We were, it, the timing kind of worked out well where we were on a break because everyone was exhausted. We had a large buildup into qualifier. So some, um, some training, some video within the national team are going to fire back up really soon, which is great. You know, we have a group chat and it's pretty humorous within the team. We're always kind of goofing around like we're in the locker room, but we're just online, which is kind of cool. Good. That's good. And um, the local team in here in New Hampshire, we've had some video sessions as well, watching some rugby. So it comes down to community, you know, and the rugby community is small. So we're kind of, you know, getting the random phone calls from guys in different parts of the world just to say hello. And so, that, you know, like usual, the, the community comes together and keeps an eye on each other. As a, I mean, you've been the four games now. You've, uh, you're a leader on this team for the past 20 years. Uh, how do you... How do you see the younger athletes on the team, uh, their, their reaction? Uh, do you think it's a bit more stressful? Obviously, none of us have been in this position before, even, even you as a veteran. But do you feel there's a bit more stress coming back from the rookies on the team? And, and, and are you trying your best to, to be a leader, even though you're far? Yeah. So we, you know, Pat and the staff have put, a, put together a really strong mentorship program. So, um, I, I work with the younger athlete individually and, and he and I have some great back and forth and this has been going on for years and he's in a totally different situation than me. You know, uh, his, his spot on the team could be, you know, up for grabs because there's a new, there's, there's, who knows, there's, there's probably going to be a new tryout. Things could happen. Um, you know, he recently just moved out on his own. So, um, it's, it would have been his first Paralympics, so a totally different uh, headspace than myself where, um, you know, things are much more the usual for me. So for him, I, I think uh, he's doing great. He's staying active. We're communicating. Um, so I, I think he's doing fine, but his stress level is going to be different and has been different than mine. It's just his questions alone are, are different than mine. So... I know for him, he's doing well. And then uh, the other youngsters on the team, they seem to be doing fine. But I would imagine their questions are, uh, are similar to, to one of the younger guys that I've been chatting with. And were you uh, surprised um, uh, that the games were postponed? Was that a shock for you? No. No. I, we didn't talk a lot about 
COVID while we were in Vancouver because it was really early on in the whole process. And just kind of watching the news and seeing how things would come along and then seeing Canada's leadership. You know, some of my friends here in, in the States are, were uh, really impressed, you know, and, and very fond of Canada in, in many regards. But with that action of, you know, what we, uh, what we came to choose is, you know, not to send athletes and then postponement. So I wasn't really surprised, but, um, I just, I was kind of proud of the way Canada handled it and, and the way Canada's handling a lot of things. And, and were you, were you planning or are you still planning on potentially retired after the Tokyo games? So is that, did that put, <laughs> Did that put additional pressure on you and your family potentially because it's an additional year to um, to to your career? Yes. So it's a constant. You know, we take it. Yeah, I I should have known you were going to go there. <laughs> it's yeah. I postponed the decision, right? I postponed right. the decision. I've been preparing for this for a long time. You know, my 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 job is up for grabs for all the youngsters and it should be that's the way it's supposed to work so i've been preparing myself and and if if tomorrow you know they moved on for me and pat and i have had this conversation that's fine i'm i'm prepared i'm confident but i'm also i love my job i feel i'm playing well you know being a, a proud paralympian i want to hold on kind of as much as possible so um You know, as long as I still get the support from the family, we're uh, we're we're planning on buying tickets to to Tokyo. Uh, you know, 2021. That's that seems to be the plan now. But day to day, you know, also. Now that you um, thinking about your sport ring career over 20 years, um, can you can you and obviously we're it's a good good uh, example that we're, we're living now. But can you reflect a time where you feel that you were really committed or you show a lot of commitment towards your sport? Great question. The commitment, I remember turning the page where I was, I was, I thought I was committed, but I wasn't putting the work in and the hours. And like the, the, the training wise, you mean? Exactly. The training, the video, the full heart and mind together and committed to. The, the the dream and the work that it takes to win a medal in the Paralympics. And I remember early on in my career where, so 04, we go in, we play for gold. And I remember being winded in the fourth. And I was really disappointed. I had a really great conversation with a teammate, Ian Chan, about, you know, that exactly thing. I was, I was ashamed, you know. I was ashamed that in the fourth quarter in a gold medal game, It, I just didn't have the wind. And that, that means I didn't put the work in. I thought I was putting the work in. And yeah. I was a 24-year-old 24 athlete. And that was the turning point for me. I was like, okay, um, what I was doing wasn't working. And I committed myself to the, you know, to the coaching staff. And, hey, what can I do so I'm not getting exhausted? <laughs> That's what happened. It was yeah. over. Yeah, well, I think, I, and I think when we think about commitment for you and being there for 20 years and, and even the games that are postponed another year, you're still committed to your passion, to your team, and you're being a great leader. So uh, good on you uh, right. and, and continue to do so. I think the team needs you more than ever. Mm -hmm. uh, so before we go, um, I, I have a quick trivia for you on, uh, on wheelchair rugby. We'll see if you know your sport, okay? So, uh, oh, uh, which country invented wheelchair rugby? I think that's an easy one. And in what year? 77, Duncan Campbell and the boys in Winnipeg. Uh, yeah, so proud heritage sport in Canada, wheelchair rugby. That's right. Okay, good one. Okay, so you're one-on-one. -on -one. Um, when was the sport uh, introduced at the Paralympics? It was uh, 96. It was a trial sport, and the boys, Garrett and the boys went there and won a silver, and then 2000, uh, they went down there and had an exceptional time. 
Wow, yeah, you're pretty good. You know your sport. Okay, and last one. Um, so since 2000, at the first Paralympics, so it's been five official Paralympics with wheelchair rugby. Uh, which are the three countries that won gold? Okay, so it's going to be Australia for two. Um, 08 was USA. Um, in 2000, we got that would have been uh, USA as well. And then we got you're missing 12, one. Australia. You're missing one country. Uh, New Zealand. There you go. <laughs> oh four. Yeah, Thank yeah. You. And I and I, I I am having great hopes that 2021 will be Canada. We have yeah. the team. We have <laughs> the team. It, I love it. I love. It. Okay, so just before you you uh, you go uh, in an ideal world, what would be um, the plan for the next couple months uh, before the end of 2020 for you and for the team um, to get back on track to prepare for the Paralympics? Right. So it's getting back to the video sessions, the regular training to our facilities, you know, the provincial training facilities, um, the local facilities, and then getting those competitions in. You know, now that we know who we're playing, we know who to video, but we want to play them as much as possible. So uh, I have hopes that we have the opportunity to get some, some tournaments in against all the top, all the top nations and just bang away with them because that's usually – the way it works, Canada Cup, we were on our way to Denmark, you know, it's it's on court, high level, you know, get right down to the grind, which is uh, which is always a good time. Well, thanks, uh, and we wish you all the best, and hopefully uh, yeah, we, uh, we get out of this quarantine and the world gets better all together, and we wish you all the best, and on, on behalf of uh, the Canadian Paralympic Committee, we uh we uh we want you to stay safe and healthy and 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 well with your uh, your close ones thank you uh, mike for for your time and all the best thank you so much for the support